Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee, and I've just fitted these quick slide bifold doors. And if you think I'm looking a bit pleased with myself, you're right, because this is my first ever attempt at fitting bifold doors. Now they're made by Quickslide, which is a company that I've known for years. I've fitted a great many of their PVC sliding sash windows, and I know them for quality and also for service. But this is my first venture into their bifold doors, and for once, it was a job that turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. Now, as every builder knows, the success or failure of a job like this lies in getting the opening right. And if you go onto the Quickslide website, you'll see good information there about measuring up. You need to measure in three places and then deduct 15 millimeters from the smallest measurement to allow for a bit of clearance. Now, just before I get down to the nuts and bolts of actually fitting the door, I just want to talk about one issue that needs to be sorted out at the planning stage. And if you've got a customer, this is a conversation that you need to have with them. And this is on the topic of level access or level thresholds, if you like. I'll just open the doors up and you can see what I'm talking about. Most people, when they have bifold doors going out onto a patio, are looking to get a level transition through from the inner floor to the outer patio. And to do this, there are several ways of doing it. You can actually use what they call a level threshold, which is what some manufacturers would do. But the number one complaint with bifold doors is water ingress. That's water finding its way through from the outside, windblown rain or whatever, and appearing along the inside of the floor. And to avoid this, what we do with the quick slide doors is we fit a conventional sill and a conventional threshold, which actually would normally sit above the floor level by 70 millimeters if you like. But if you drop it down, it means that any water that is driven in under there will be drained away through the wheat poles which are on the outside. You can still have your level threshold. We haven't got one here because it would have meant building up the garden far too much, a lot of work. But if you want a level threshold, you can just set the slab in at the same level as the inside of the floor. Normally people put an echo drain in there to help drain that water away. That's a very good idea indeed to do that. But also be careful that the patio isn't too high that it stops the doors from opening outwards, if they're outward opening doors that you've chosen. And also the issue of snow, if it's snowing and the snow builds up, you won't be able to open that door out, but that's a small consideration. But as I say, get that right. And if you set that level in below there, you'll make sure that any water is drained safely away and you won't have any trouble at all. we've got the sill in and we're ready to put the frame on top so what we've done is we've run some silicone along the back edge here only run it along the back edge it's not necessary to run it along the front edge all that will do is trap moisture in we're just trying to make sure that no moisture gets up climbs into the floor inside I just want to explain something here. Even though we've made sure that the frame is plumb on both ends, absolutely as upright as we can get, even with the best spirit level in the world, which this probably is, you can still get a slight twist on the frame. 
is because the frame is so large. So what we do is we stretch string lines diagonally across the frame and then we make sure that they're touching in the middle. If they're pushing hard, just pull the frame away slightly till they're just kissing each other in the middle where they cross over. If they're touching just right, it means that you're plumb at both ends and you haven't got a twist in the frame. It's a simple tip, it's been used for centuries and it works. Lasers can't beat it. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. We've got the frame in, it's all good, secure, it's in square, it's in straight, it's plumbed up. I'm absolutely happy with that. In particular, over the head there, because you get a bit of pull on the top of the head, you've got to make sure that you put a nice secure fixing in all the way along there, 100 mil from the edges and then 600 centers all the way through so that you've got plenty of secure fixing. In particular, look out for that lintel. Make sure that it's a good solid lintel and it's securely in place because you don't want it to start pulling it out of the wall. There's a fairly fine thread on these screws and obviously you don't want to get them cross threaded but you find that once you get the hinge in and the weight off the door then they do spin in fairly fairly readily. If they're not going in well it's probably because you've got them misaligned. Now we leave the middle one out until we've lined the doors up. Once we're happy with the way the doors are lined through, then we put the last screw in to fix it in its position. Okay, I just want to explain about the hinges and the way they're adjusted. You've got two Allen keys in the kit. The larger one, for the larger screws, when you're actually fitting the hinges onto the door, you fit them on like that and that locks onto the plate that's inside. Now that plate that's inside can slide up and down so that gives you a little bit of scope for adjustment. What you do is you line the doors through and you slide them up and down by releasing the grab screws which is the smaller allen key which are basically locking those slides to the aluminium frame. So by unlocking those very slightly, loosening those off, you can then slide the hinge up and down. Once you've done that, you lock off back again with your grab screws to keep the thing tight. Then just check, measure all the way through to make sure you've got 11 millimeters. And once you've done that, you can then put in the final fixing screw. Now this is a self-drilling, self-tapping screw. So you best do that with a power screwdriver. I'll show you how to do it. And that goes through the central hole, which has no thread in it. So you'll know it's the right hole. It slides all the way through. It self-drills into the frame channel itself, and that locks the hinge absolutely in place. Once that screw is in place, you won't have any further scope for adjustment and quite honestly, you shouldn't need it.
when you receive your window, in the instructions will be a small leaflet which talks about towing and healing the glass. Now this is something that a lot of people get confused about. What the glass actually does is to brace the frame rather like a ledged and braced door. Although this frame is nicely welded up and it's fairly rigid, what you find is that because of the weight, there is a tendency sometimes for it to just pull slightly down and go slightly out of square. So what they do in double glazing is they use the glass itself as a brace for the frame. And the way you do this is that you go from the bottom corner to the top corner. So the bottom corner of the hinge to the top corner, which is the floating edge, if you like, and you brace it across that diagonal, putting packers in either side, and that makes sure that that frame stays absolutely square all the time. The sequence for towing and healing the remaining frames is shown in the manufacturer's literature. Just work through the remaining frames, adding or removing packers to make sure that the frames are square. So when it comes to doing the gasket, first thing is dip it in a bit of water with a bit of washing up liquid. That makes it go in a lot easier. The other thing is cut the gasket longer than you actually need it because the last thing you want to do is stretch this gasket and then find that it shrinks back and you get a gap at either end. And then I always use a couple of spacers, put the spacers in just so that you're pressing the glass against the outer gasket. That little bit of compression will help you. And then you might at the corners with a pair of scissors, push the edge in, and then what we do is a little Loch Ness monster around there, a little loop like that. Push the gasket in all the way. So that's it, that's the installation complete and I hope you found that useful. From my point of view, the real joy of it was that I didn't get presented with this big bag of bits and a set of indecipherable instructions and have to assemble the runners and all those things. All that comes on the windows, ready to go. Even the outer frame came ready assembled, so it really does make it easy to fit. But I'll just run through those major points again. First get the opening right, level, square, upright, make sure you get the measurements right when you order the window. Secondly, look at that threshold. You must get that threshold sunk down below the level so that you don't get water ingress. The third thing is, when you put the frame in and you've got them all screwed in there, check that 11 millimeter measurement all the way along. You can even use a laser level to do it. Make sure that's right, then put the glass in, then check it by towing and healing again to make sure that the frames are still all square and everything's running nicely. If you do that, you won't get any gaskets catching on the top or the bottom. The whole thing will run like a dream. If you've got any more questions about it, you want more information, go to the QuickSlide website. They'll help you. There's an online designer there. You can even get an instant quote on your window. And if you've got any more questions, give them a call. They don't bite.